God, you Australians are so f***ing rude! Video game voice acting in the beginning was very low pain, not very serious, the scripting was not very good usually, uh, the directing was awful. The work environment sucks, but I bet the benefits are nice. Just the last four or five years, it's become unionized work. Uh, the pay is much better than it used to be. So obviously, w when the pay scale went up and the revenue was generated by the industry, the standards came up dramatically as well. Now the directors are better, the voice actors are of higher quality generally. Uh, the quality of the games in general is getting better and better all the time. Look at games like World of Warcraft, for instance. There are 400 characters, 400 different voices in that game, of which I do a few you and uh, that kind of work just keeps coming around if you're lucky enough to land a lead role in a game like that you could be working for years on just a single game so yeah you know, there's plenty of work out there it's getting the lead roles that's tricky it's a nice day to die for you that is you remember the old games with the eight bit lines yeah. that I, I had a limit of maybe five to seven seconds that a line could be because they could only put so many files on a CD-ROM at the time, you know. Now it's wide open and there's a lot of dialogue and, and a lot of cutscenes for them to put audio on. So there's more acting in general in these games. It's not just one-liners anymore. There's actual acting. I'm gonna rip your eye out and piss on your brain, you alien dirtbag! All I have to do is just bring up some anger from inside, which I find easy to do. I have ex-wives, so, <laughs> so I just think angry and I grit my teeth and it just flows out. It's very easy. Magic 8-Ball says, you died. There are other characters that I find challenging to do. Uh, for instance, in um, Guild Wars 2 or in Dota, where I'm uh, a blood seeker, which is a Hispanic character. He's got this tough voice, but he also has a Hispanic accent he has to maintain the whole time. So I find that a bit of a challenge to stay in that character for so long. Lie down. Have a cookie. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and I've tried to get other game uh, character roles where they went, oh no, we're afraid everybody's going to think of you as Duke. It's like, dude, I do a lot of voices. They're not, they're not all Duke. I can do a lot of voices. Yeah, but we... Looks like I tattooed your face with my fist. This sword cuts both ways. The fact that I've been Duke Nukem since 1995 means that all of those junior high and high school kids who played Duke Nukem 3D in the 90s are now game developers. They're the top guys at these software companies. Like, I'm pretty sure Valve hired me several times for their work because they're fans. Welcome to the Abyss. They could have had me record in San Diego or in Los Angeles, but no, they insisted on flying me to Seattle to record there because they're fans. So while there's that element, you know, the fans that will hire me just because of the association with them playing Duke, there are the others who are afraid that it's, I'm going to be seen as Duke no matter what. What kind of sick motherfucker picks up wet feces? I think he's a great and viable character for uh, the next motion picture superhero. Anybody mind if I take off my pants? He'd be great! Duke is a... And now that everything can be done CG, there's no reason to have to cast somebody who looks like him. Just animate the whole thing. And, and as a matter of fact, that could be a whole new genre of film. The R-rated CG movie. It should happen. You can show titties and everything, right?